Hey guys, it's Caleb, and I've got an unusual fruit to share with you today. These are called black zapote, also known as chocolate pudding fruit. And some people say these do actually taste like chocolate pudding, and then many people say they don't taste anything like chocolate, so I'm kind of interested to see what I think of these. I have made a video about growing black zapote seeds before into little plants, so I'll show you those little trees at the end of the video, give you an update on them. But yeah, I've never actually tried the fruit, so pretty excited to have a chance to try these today. The fruits that I've got here are smaller than the ones you usually see. Usually they're about the size of a persimmon, so quite a bit larger than this. And these ones were growing here in New Zealand, so I'm wondering if it's just because our climate's a bit cooler here, it's not the tropical climate that these really thrive in, so that's possibly why these are smaller. But it also might be because these came from a seedling growing tree. But yeah, could be a bit of both. But you might be looking at this thinking, why on earth would you want to try this? It's super squishy and soft and just looks like you need to chuck it in the bin. And that's the thing with black sapote, that's the stage that you need to eat them at. So on a black sapote tree, these start out green and they're not ready to eat at that green stage. They're apparently very astringent and basically inedible, but you can pick them at their mature stage while they're still green and that just stops animals getting to them before you do. And then they'll take one to two weeks off the tree to get to this ripe stage that we've got here. So yeah, as gross as it seems, this is when you gotta eat them, when they're super soft and squishy. I'm not too sure what I'm gonna think of the texture because, you know, soft, soggy textures don't seem like they'll be very nice, but you never know, we'll see what it's gonna be like. Anyway, let's cut this open. Oh, wow. So no seeds in these. Usually these have around eight to 10 big seeds in them. There's possibly, I think, a little bit of a remnant of a seed uh, just in there, but pretty much almost non-existent. So it's that beautiful, dark, kind of glossy, almost oily looking fruit. Really, really amazing. It does look like chocolate pudding. It looks really out of it. Yeah, let's kind of mix it up a little bit and see if we can get a bit of the flesh out. Damn, that's so weird. All right, here we go. We've got a little bit of the flesh there on the spoon. Looks super tasty. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. We'll give it a try. Hmm. Far out, that is actually, that's mind blowing. That is really weird, but in a good way. Um, not at all what you expect from a fruit. The texture is very much like, um, almost like a smooth cake batter. It's very, very, very smooth. Like just really smooth, really tasty. That is not a fruit that I've ever tried anything like before. It's not super sweet, but it's a really nice um, nice flavor. But the thing that really impresses me with this is the texture. And I am quite a texture person. I'm not someone that likes kind of weird textures or textures that are super soft. And I definitely don't like overripe fruits or fruits that kind of go fizzy and overripe. Definitely not a fan of that. But as for these, I can definitely eat them. And I don't even like sort of a overripe avocado, but these, the texture is just completely different. It's super smooth and creamy and almost like oily or buttery or something. It's, it's so different and unusual. The taste itself reminds me a little bit of an avocado actually, like just that kind of mm, green taste, but with more sweetness and it's way more pleasant to eat. It's not at all like eating an avocado. It doesn't taste like chocolate to me at all. I would say probably from the descriptions I've heard that quite often they are sweeter than the one that I've got here, but this one isn't bad at all. Like the flavor is still really nice. It's just a mild sweetness, but I would definitely eat this again and I do quite enjoy it. Just want to try this larger fruit as well and see what that one's like, uh, cause it's a little bit firmer than the other ones. And again, it looks really beautiful and glossy on the inside. These scoop out real well and they're way easier to eat than that really soggy soft one we started with. Mmm. Wow. That was a way better one. I, I wasn't expecting the firmer ones to be sweeter because I thought they'd be less ripe, but that had like a punch of sweetness in it, more than the other one, way more. And it is quite pudding-like. It does remind me a little bit of eating like a chocolate mousse or something. I wouldn't say still that it's got a chocolate flavor. I don't get the chocolate flavor, but I do get that kind of similarity to a dessert or a pudding. And these are actually used in, you know, things like desserts. They're made into mousses and cakes and smoothies, all that type of things. But yeah, I'm just stoked that I got a chance to try these because you don't really see these around at all, especially here in New Zealand. And many places around the world, I'm sure it's very hard to find these. 
It's always fun and interesting to try different fruits and this one is definitely out of this world compared to any other fruit that I've tried. It's completely unique. Always look out for getting your hands on some new fruits. It's always fun to try them, experience um, what nature has out there to offer. And even if it's not the most intensely sweet and tasty fruit, things like texture can really kind of give you a pretty interesting experience and something to try. So this tree here is a persimmon tree, and the reason I'm showing you this is because black zapote are related to these, they're in the persimmon family. And even though they're called black zapote, they're not actually related to the sapotes I've talked about before, like white zapote or mame zapote. These are all fruits from different families, and the name zapote basically means a soft edible fruit, which is what these fruits have in common. So it can be a little bit confusing, but yeah, black sapote are related to persimmons. And you can see here that this persimmon tree is just covered in flowers at the moment. And the flowers are quite similar to those of a black sapote tree. So I thought I'd show you so you get a bit of an idea what the black sapote flowers look like. And I've had this one in the ground for just over two years, and it's really starting to take off now. And this material around the tree is just to protect it from really strong winds. I did also put over some frost cloth for its first winter while it was younger, but this year it did totally fine without any protection, which is not surprising because these can be grown in areas down to around zone 7. Alright, so these are my black sapote trees here, and they're just starting to put out a bit of growth after pretty much not growing at all during the winter. And they're roughly all at about the same stage of growth, except for this guy over here, and there is a reason for that. And pretty much what I've found with these trees is that if you have them maybe inside during the winter, if you live in a colder place, and I had these inside, when I put them back outside in the springtime, even with just getting one hour of full sun that this guy got by mistake, the leaves turned completely black and they all fell off. And all that was left was just a single trunk, it looked completely dead, but I kept looking after it and it eventually grew back, so that's why he's so much smaller. You can see some of the damage that this guy got as well, there's a little bit of uh, black still on the leaf down the bottom there, so luckily he wasn't too damaged. But this year in the spring when I brought them back outside, I put them under two layers of shade cloth and even that was enough to slightly burn the leaves, so just be really careful with that. And with these trees being native to Mexico, Central America and Colombia, they do like warmer temperatures. And here it's kind of borderline because, you know, we do get frost. These will not survive the frost when they're young. And when they're a mature established tree, if you can get them to that point, they can handle, I think, around negative two degrees Celsius. But again, you know, that's kind of the lowest and you wouldn't want it to be at that temperature for very long. So we'll keep these in pots and keep them going. And eventually maybe I'll have somewhere that I can put them. But otherwise, yeah, maybe I'll grow them in a greenhouse or something like that. I do need to repot these though since the weather's warming up. So let's go tip this guy out and we'll see what his roots are looking like. All right, far out. It's got quite a lot of roots. There's no noticeable big main tap root, but yeah, definitely looks like he wants to be repotted. All of this is just piled at the bottom, so definitely not ideal. We've got our pot here, which is filled with some potting mix and a little bit of compost mixed in as well. All right, and I'm just putting a bit of mulch over the top just to keep him protected and keep the moisture in. All right, guys, well, thanks heaps for watching. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Hope you have an awesome rest of your day, and I'll catch you in the next one.